Chapter 11 In the previous chapter, Peter had met with Cornelius, an enemy of the people, a Roman centurion, and God baptized him with the Holy Spirit when Peter had given him the gospel. And he also baptized him and his household, his kindred, his servants in a water baptism. But Peter went back to Jerusalem and in verse 3 the uh, disciples, the apostles said, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. You know the, uh, the Jewish people of Jerusalem they were kind of a bit confused why Peter would go to an uncircumcised person, eat with them and uh, give them the word of God I guess, you know, they were confused by that. But Peter explained that he received a vision and God had uh, told him to go there and uh, also it says in verse 12 that six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose surname is Peter who shall tell thee the words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved so you know he said like what option did I have you know these this household this Cornelius had received a vision of an angel and uh, with regards to what angels look like you know the Bible says that we should entertain all men because it could be that we entertain angels unawares so it's possible for us to do that so angels don't really have wings but uh, the point here that Peter was trying to make is that not only did he see a vision but Cornelius saw an angel and it says in verse 16 then remembered I the word of the Lord how that he said John indeed baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost so you know John's baptism was a baptism of repentance you know produce uh, meat in keeping with repentance you should be choose, producing fruit in keeping with repentance he was preparing the way for the Lord and then we have Jesus's baptism which is like a um, a symbolic baptism of uh, dying with Christ and coming back to life with Christ. Uh, you're making a public confession of um, following the Lord Jesus and professing him as Lord of your life. And baptism is really important. Repentance really should come before that though. When you believe in God you should be saying, you know, I repent of my sin, I want to be more like you. And you're going to make mistakes, there's no doubt about it. But um, you know that's that's the life that we're called to live a life of repentance which is a good foundation to us to um, come on to holiness which is what God wants God wants us the will of God is to live a holy life you know that's what he wants from us so repentance is quite important but the point that he's getting at is that you know John did a water baptism of repentance but God is going to baptize people with his Holy Spirit and that's what happened to Cornelius and in verse 18 um, they said back to him in reply then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life now repentance unto life is um, an interesting one because I've already explained to you uh, that you need repentance as a Christian but I think in 2 Corinthians which uh, I haven't bookmarked unfortunately um, let's see if we can find it I wrote this down because I, I do feel it's important which is why I'm going to it it's 2 Corinthians 7 10 it says this for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repenteth of but the sorrow of the world worketh to death so like normal sorrow that works to death is like oh yeah I shouldn't have done that but godly sorrow is like when you hurt inside and you repent you say I don't want to do that anymore because you have a godly sorrow so you repent of your sin that no longer needs to be repented of because it's been forgiven it's all been paid off you know at the cross and you can continue walking in the light of Jesus uh, with joy so that's what we need as Christians and in verse 19 it says now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen 
travelled as far as uh, Penance and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. So they had the persecution after Stephen. It was still continuing on, you know, when the Jews didn't like <laughs> the Christians, they sacked the way in uh, Jerusalem. So they persecuted them out and they went all the way up to Antioch, which is to the north of Jerusalem. And it's about 300 miles just east of uh, Greece. And um, Antioch is like a really important place in the early church. And uh, I'll explain why as we go through this. Uh, so they went all the way up to Antioch, but they were preaching to the Jews first because the emphasis was still on uh, the Jewish people coming to Christ, which is why all Jews should be Jews for Christ. They should uh, not necessarily be converted, although maybe they should be converted. You know, they need to give up the Old Testament law and instead rely on the grace of Jesus Christ. But yeah, they went to go and preach to the Jews first of all. And in verse 20 at the end of it, it says, When they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. You know, the hand of the Lord was with them. And I think that we need this as evangelists. We need to be asking for the hand of the Lord to be with us when we go and proclaim the word. And lots of people were added to them, and it was a really successful evangelistic area, this place in Antioch. In fact, the, um, the Christians really did have uh, a time of peace there. And they brought to that area, they brought prophets, apostles, disciples from Jerusalem, and a special Levite, which is given a mention here, and his name is uh, Barnabas. Now Barnabas was called previously, um, he was called, I think it's uh, chapter 436, he was called uh, the son of encouragement. So he came there and encouraged the disciples, which is really needed, that ministry is so much needed in the church, especially in early church, you know, they need to be encouraged that their sins are forgiven, and to find ministries in people, and to try and bring out not only their natural gifts, but their spiritual gifts. And um, I've had people encourage me in my life, and it's, it's a great benefit. The Bible says at the end of verse 22, they sent forth Barnabas, uh, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose and heart they would clave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord, so he was like building up the church and bringing them on and moving them on onto bigger things. He was the son of encouragement, and that's really what's needed. Now, one of the great things here is in verse 26, kind of halfway through it, it says this. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. The word Christian meaning like a miniature version of Christ. So they, they were reflecting Jesus Christ. And at Antioch, that's where the name first came from. So before that, they were just called like disciples or considered a sect of the way. Um, but here they're called Christians. And Antioch, you know they stayed there for a year they had apostles disciples prophets you know they had this levite that went there that no doubt may have brought scrolls with him had a lot of knowledge as they all did because you know they were they were jews some many of them had spent three years with jesus and then they spent one year in this place in a time of peace and teaching um, all of the people and building them up so that they could um, move out and continue this this mission of telling the whole world about the gospel. So Antioch really was like a headquarters of the um, of the apostles and uh, disciples. It's a very important region. It was like where they first started to teach everybody, and uh, <clears throat> they moved out from persecution from Jerusalem to Antioch and sort of set up camp, I guess. And the apostles, you know, they were with Jesus for three years. They spent one whole year in this place, which only goes to show you that good stuff came out of Antioch. 
and the reason why I mention that is because there's these there's these things called manuscripts which are really like um, the original language of where they would have recorded the the gospels and and the letters and all of the the books of the bibles and the scrolls etc and many of them were found in Antioch and in this time of peace no doubt they copied many of them and uh, for me really I feel that the manuscripts in Antioch have a an higher authority uh, which is why I do believe in the King James Bible and I'm not saying that you know the you, you can use any Bible you want you know um, but I do believe that there's a there's a special thing about the manuscripts found in Antioch which are called the Textus Receptus and um, you know it's beneficial to use them um, I would trust them over other manuscripts that were found in Egypt and <laughs> and other such places you know um, so if that's something that you want to research then great you know but um, yeah good things came out of Antioch and there was a time of peace there Thank you.